Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're converting decimals to fractions. Now, you need to understand what a decimal is really before you can understand what we're going to do here. So if you're not familiar with decimals, watch the decimals what are they video that I've done which explains what decimals are. But the concepts are really important. You need to understand those first before we look at this. Alright, so let's say you've got some decimal number, you want to convert it into a fraction. Now there are some that you should just know, that you shouldn't have to do anything to them. You should just know what they are. So for example, 0.5, you shouldn't be using some method to convert that into a half. You should just know that 0.5 is a half. The reason you should just learn these is a bit like your times tables. You don't need to know what 14 times 23 is. You need to know how to work it out, but you should know what 3 times 6 is. There are some that come up very often, they're very common, and so you should just learn them off by heart. So 0.25 will be the next one. You should just know that that's a quarter. Hopefully you already know these ones, most people do. Um, slightly trickier is 0.75. This is just 3 times 0.25, so the equivalent here will be just 3 times a quarter, so it's 3 quarters. So those are some basic ones you should know, and most people do know those already. There's a couple of other ones though that you should also know partly because they're quite difficult to convert using any kind of method, but also because they come up quite a lot. So the first one is 0.3 recurring, we say, and that's where the threes go on forever here. Sometimes you can write that as 0.3 with a dot above the three, and as I say, we call this 0.3 recurring. It means that the threes just go on forever. And as a fraction, this is the same as a third. So you should learn that one. It's a very important one, comes up very often. Now, in a bit like we did with the 0.25 and the 0.75, if we times this by 2, instead of 0.3333333, we're going to get 0.66666, so lots of sixes going on forever. And again, if you write that in the recurring form, you just stick a dot above the 6. Yep, so this means 0 0.6, where the 6 is then going forever. And as a fraction, well, this is twice as big as this, so this fraction is going to be twice as big as this, so it's going to be two-thirds. So those are the set of standard ones that I think you should know off by heart. As I say, you'll, most of you will already know those. You might not be familiar with these last two, so just remember 0.3 recurring is a third, and 0.6 recurring is two-thirds. They do come up quite a lot. You should learn those. All right. So those are the basic ones, but then how do you actually work out what any old random decimal number is as a fraction? Well, we go back to the definition of what a decimal is. So if you have 0.6, for example, by definition that means you've got no units and 6 tenths. So as a fraction it's 6 tenths. That's it. If you know what a decimal is, it's easy to write it as a fraction. Remember that with fractions you must always cancel them down. So 6 tenths, if you cancel that down, becomes 3 fifths. Just divide the top and bottom by 2. So 0 0.6 as a fraction would actually be 3 fifths. Let's look at another one. 0 0.03. So you've got no tenths, sorry, no units, no tenths, and 3 hundredths. So as a fraction, that's just 3 hundredths. Check if it cancels down, this one doesn't, so that's your answer. Now, if you've got a number with more than just a single digit here, so if you had 0.49, for example, in general, when you're converting decimals into fractions, all that really matters is what position the furthest column is. So the furthest column to the right, that is. So there's no units here. You've got four tenths and nine hundredths, and what matters here is the hundredths. That's the furthest one you've got to the right, so you're going to put this over hundredths. So you can just read this as 49 hundredths. And you write it just as a fraction like that. Check if it cancels down. This one doesn't. So that would be the answer. All right, let me try a slightly harder one. If we have 0 0.125, this one does come up quite a lot as well. Now, 
This is the tenths column, the hundredths column, the thousandths column. So if you remember what I said, it's the column furthest to the right that matters. You just write it all over that. So this will be 125 thousandths because that's in the thousandths column. 125 over a thousand. And then we have the slightly difficult job of cancelling this down. Now, five will go into both of these. So you've got fives into 125. Well, fives into 100 would go 20 times. Yep, five times 20 is 100. And five goes into 25 five times. So 20 times plus five times means that's 25 times into 125. And fives into 1,000, well, five lots of 200 would be 1,000. So that's going to go 200 times. Uh, now, five will go into both of these. In fact, 25 will go into both of these. That might be easier to do. So 25 goes into 25 once. And 25 into 200, well, 25 into 100 will go four times. Four lots of 25 makes 100. So into 200, two lots of four makes eight. So there are various ways you can cancel it down. But as long as you divide the top and the bottom by the same number, you'll be fine. And you just keep going until you can't go any further. So 0 0.125 as a fraction will be an eighth. All right, so the basic method is very straightforward. You find the column furthest to the right that you've got. So here it's tenths, hundredths, hundredths. This one's thousandths. And then you write the number as a fraction over that amount. So here is 125 thousandths. Here it's 49 hundredths. Here it's six tenths. Then just remember to cancel down the fractions and you've got your answer. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.